Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Daily Dose Podcast. Today's episode is sponsored by Naked Actives, an amazing skincare company. If you go on their website, they have video blogs and readable blogs where you can actually see different skincare products and the use they have for people that actually use the products. They have hydrating products, skin repair, skin aging serums with all natural ingredients. You can see all the ingredients on the website. There's also a lot of frequently asked questions as well as a skin map that you can take a quiz to understand your skin and what you need. So go check them out. They're an amazing natural skincare company and they have all the different serums that you could ever need. Check them out, like and subscribe the video and enjoy. Hello everybody, welcome back to the Daily Dose podcast. Today we have on a formal, former principal of mine, Mr. Cardamone. Uh, it's great to have you on and I really appreciate you coming. Uh, welcome. Hi Ryan, thank you. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Uh, you want to give us a little bit of a brief description about yourself, where you're at now? What are you, what are you kind of doing? Absolutely. Uh, I'm a principal, uh, a proud principal in Niagara Catholic. I'm actually at Mary Ward Catholic School in Niagara Falls. Uh, love being here. Um, as you're aware, I was at Loretto Catholic for a number of years and prior to that, Holy Name um, as a uh, principal. So longstanding principal in Niagara Catholic and love my job, uh, love the communities that I've served. And uh, right now, um, you know, proud dad as well. Uh, got a son and a daughter and a wife who also works at Niagara Catholic. And uh, yeah, that's who I am in a, in a nutshell. Awesome. Well, I can tell you from my experience that you were an amazing principal and an amazing man now that I'm talking to you quite a few years later. So it's very nice to catch up. Um, let's start off with the first question here. Let, I, me, let me, if you don't mind, let me thank you for that. that that's awesome. And I, I'm so honored that you even thought of me. So thank you for reaching out to me. And I look forward to, you know, having this uh, brief discussion with you today. Awesome. All right. Well, the first question I would like to ask. Um, so when you're going to your goals, there's always going to be things you don't predict. Um, with COVID, obviously, that was something that everyone had challenges and, and things to face. Uh, for a principal, what was that like for you? Because you have to take care of teachers, of the students, of parents. So what did you kind of do when challenges came during COVID? Yeah, Ryan, great question. Um, you know, March 2020, uh, you know, everything stopped. You know, you had, um, you know, kids and, and staff and, and myself looking forward to March break. And then all of that changed with COVID. Uh, nobody knew what was to come. Uh, you know, our, our business, in, and I call it a business, uh, it, it, it's a great career. You're dealing with people face to face, and especially kids, staff, you have communities, you have parents, and all of that stopped. All of a sudden, it transitions to everything online. And the big question was how, how do you remain connected? And uh, without aging myself here, uh, you know, not the strongest when it came to, you know, the computer and all of the apps and all of the fun things that, you know, kids know, that's who they mm. turn to, to, to learn. Uh, the big part was how to stay connected. You know, people were fearful at the time, how to, you know, keep your community calm. You know, the kids had no idea. I'm an elementary school principal. So you have students that are in great, you know, four years old, all the way up to 14. So, you know, your younger kids are not understanding why they're not going to school. So the main thing was for me to try to keep the community connected. How, how did that happen? Over time, it was, you know, especially the parents letting them know from a school standpoint, you know, what is it that we're doing to try to keep connected? Uh, you know, the staff, they had to transition from in front of the classroom, dealing with kids every day to online and how to keep, you know, those connections and, and the learning to continue. So, you know, there was a, a huge learning curve for staff, uh, learning programs, trying to, you know, uh, disseminate curriculum via computer as opposed to, you know, in front sitting next to a, a student uh, that way. But things that I did, um, you know, with my VPs and, and with my staff, uh, you know, sending out emails to families, uh, uh, we loved, uh, after a short while, we transitioned our announcements. As you know, you know, we do announcements every morning. How did we do that? We learned to record announcements. You know, we had jokes of the day. Uh, you know, we still reached out uh, to kids 
and uh, announce their birthdays. So we, we continued to do that. Uh, we did spirit days. Uh, we used Twitter, Instagram, all of that stuff that I had to learn how to use. Yeah. Um, it was funny that I did. I would turn to my kids and say, uh, you know, Elise, what, what do I do with this? I don't know how Instagram works. So, uh, you know, she taught me and my son taught me and uh, using Twitter, the, well, they don't use Twitter, they use Instagram, but uh, to inform families and to, you know, share spirit days, we had dress down days, and we would take pictures and you'd share that with the community. So all of those things that uh, we did to try to keep a community, um, you know, together, especially during trying times, um, you know, those were some of the quick things that we had to do on our feet to, to keep a community get together. Yeah, well, that's uh, that kind of relates to one one thing. Uh, two podcasts ago, that one of the uh, guests I had, he was talking about community, and that's very important to him. And it's very important, like you were talking about, how everyone's coming together with your kids and yourself to work together because you can't do things alone. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. So working as a team, that's that's very important. When you were going through all of these different things and learning, um, what was it? What did you kind of like adapting to the to the different circumstances that it, some people might find that very stressful did you do you do anything outside of work for yourself that you kind of keep that level so you can come in the next day and keep yourself level-headed uh that's a great question um for, you have to keep yourself healthy i i like to read uh you know i read biographies and do that just to get away uh, at the time i'm not sure i was doing a lot of that um uh, because i was doing a lot of reaching out uh, to, to others, right? Like, you know, what, to staff, everybody's in a different place. So you had to make sure that the staff was okay, so that they can take care of the kids that were, uh, they were serving in, in front of them. Uh, but, you know, I, I have a strong family at home. And, you know, my wife did all of the things that she does uh, at home to take care of things. And, you know, I leaned on her a lot. Um, so yeah, that's really it. Yeah. And it's very good as well. You talked about, um, well, you didn't say it specifically, but forming those positive, like the announcements, uh, reaching out to people, that's very uh, important to keep that positive mindset as well when, when a lot of change comes because change is inevitable. Absolutely. Um, for you, were, did you always know this was the path that you're going to take being a principal or did you always know you're going to be a teacher? Like, what did that kind of look like for you? Yeah, as a young guy like you, I was, um, you know, especially leaving high school and uh, you know, I loved football. I was a, always a sports guy. And I'm sure that you and I chatted about sports when you were at uh, Loretto Catholic. But um, I, 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 that was the path that I wanted to go. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to be the next football star. But when that, that didn't pan out, naturally, um, you know, I thought about education. I always looked up to, there was a lot of teachers that I looked up to in my early days and thought that was the path for me. And it, and it was. And, you know, I went to school and uh, got my uh, undergraduate and then went to uh, Canisius and uh, got my uh, graduate degree there. And uh, it was in my first um, contract teaching assignment that um, one of the principals um, that I worked for, um, you know, it, it was a sh just a short time there. And it, right away, he said, hey, I see leadership in your path. What, do you, what are your thoughts? Like, do you ever want to be a principal? And at the time, I never even thought of it. And it was just, you know, took somebody who, you know, gently nudged me and said, hey, why don't you try that career path? And, you know, over the years, because, you know, it just doesn't happen. Uh, you know, there's a lot of schooling, a lot of courses you need. Uh, but it, it always was in the back of my mind. And, you know, after I think it was 12 or 13 years of being in the classroom, um, I started the path. I, you know, took the courses and, you know, started to, you know, do some interviews and finally got into the leadership pool. Um, you know, the Niagara Catholic Board had a leadership pool. And uh, from there, then you were selected and became a VP. And I absolutely loved it. You know, got my own school 15 years ago. And it was awesome. Like, you know, you're the principal of the school. At first, you do miss the classroom, you know, because as a VP, you're in the, in the classroom, you teach half day, and you're a VP for half a day supporting the principal. Um, so I remember the first number of months, I'm like, oh, I miss being in a classroom. Uh, you know, that connection that you have with kids. And, you know, as time goes on, you know, you learn about the paperwork and that can be done later on. And, and you try to get into classrooms. And uh, I love 
you know, one of my passions is not missing a recess. And, and as you would know that outside all the time, you know, yep. even in my fifties now, I'm still throwing the football around outside with kids. So, you know, continue to do that, love it. And um, that was one of the things uh, that, you know, kept me motivated was getting outside for recess and uh, around the school at lunchtime. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's definitely something uh, keeping what, what makes you happy because you need to, yes, you're going to have things during your job that you have to do that you can't necessarily get away from, but doing the things that, like you said, getting out for recess, everyone's going to have something that makes them, brings them joy during the day. And it's important to keep that. Yeah, correct. Uh, one thing that I heard you say in the middle there was talking about, you can, you can do that later. Have you ever came into a, because you can't always know, you're not always going to know when you go into something. So what do you kind of like, what is your mindset towards going into something new? Because when you go into something new, you're not always going to have all of the preparation. So what, what do you kind of do for yourself to just, do you just dive into it? Do you kind of have a plan or? Yeah. If you're, if we're talking about careers or anything like that for, you know, the younger generations, um, like you're young, kids come out of high school, very young now. And, you know, you look at a, a lot of the things, sorry, you look at a lot of things that are, um, that are happening very young, choosing careers. And I can, I can speak to, you know, my daughter, let's say, and I, we had a great conversation with her, you know, she wants to get into, you know, um, you know, a certain course, get into nursing. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, after a year and a half, she doesn't, she's not as happy. Uh, my big thing, and I talk to kids, we talk about careers all the time. You have to be happy. I get up in the morning and I love going, we call it work. I mm -hmm. love coming to school. It's still for me going to school. Yeah. If you don't love doing something, it's not worth it. I say, you know, especially when you're younger, take your time, learn about different career paths, uh, you know, stick to what you're happy with. And if you're not happy with something, there's opportunities for change, whether that means going back to school, that means getting a, a you know, different, um, you know, diploma in some sort, uh, trying a different career. Uh, you know, there's a lot of different co-ops. There's a lot of different things that, you know, you can do. But the main thing is you, you want to be happy because it's something that you're going to do for a long time. Right. So, you know, that that's my thing in talking to kids. You know, they're like, I want to do this or I want to be that. It's awesome. Have that passion because it's going to take work to get there. Uh, but most importantly, you have to be happy with what you're doing. That's a very good point. Uh, for me, that took quite a while to understand. I always felt like I needed to do what other people said, or I always felt like I needed to do the right path, whatever that means. But being happy is, is definitely the most important thing. Um, for yourself, did you ever run into like a little bit of bad advice where, where you felt like you were going down a path that you felt others should make you do, or that you thought that others, this is what they want? Or did you always kind of have that clear, this is what I kind of want to do for myself? For a career or job wise yeah I, actually it, it's funny you know once i got into my career path it, it was the path that i knew once you get to something you're like yeah this is what i'm passionate about this is what i love and you continue doing that you know early on um as a, a teenager you know early going to school i was at brock university and you know after my first year it, it, i was in the phys ed program there and it wasn't the program that i really wanted as i told you you think about being a football star um i i wasn't happy with the program and um also being in niagara falls you work in the tourism industry so i i, I had you know uh job offers you know to work in hotels and the, the tips were great and the money was great. And people were like, yeah, you know, stay here. You can manage a hotel one day. And that was after year one of university, I thought, yeah, maybe I'm just going to go do that because, you know, it's easy money and it's good. But I knew that I wouldn't be happy. So, you know, as I talked about earlier, I, I continued and I said, well, let me continue trying this. This is what I want to do. Uh, I, I switched gears in, in university, took a different program, which I loved, and that set me on my career path. But it was that summer, and I remember thinking the easy way out right now would be to take a break, go work, make good money, but I didn't do that. So I, I continued on, you know, what my goal was, and 
Uh, I'd had already established that and, and continued and it worked out for me. Um, but again, you know, a, a lot of, of my friends at the time, they're like, How, you can't leave that money on the table. It's not always about the money. It's about, you know, happiness and enjoying things. So that, that's the career path I chose. And, and I'm really happy doing what I'm doing now. Absolutely. I can personally relate to that. I mean, a lot of that, that money trap, you can say it, it is a little bit of a, it's enticing, but at the same time, you know, deep down that something else is pulling at you. Absolutely. Great point. Yeah. Um, so one question, one thing I want to say, when I was in elementary school, you were very, you were very helpful and you were very level-headed all the time through all situations. Is there anything that you kind of attribute that to? Because we're always going to have certain situations that you didn't know was going to come or certain people were going to run into. And you were always very, you always approached everything with kindness. So is there anything that you've kind of done throughout your, your life or attribute that to like handling situations in a certain way, the way you want it to? Uh, another great question. Thank you. Um, one, of, one of my things that I've learned, and I learned early in my career as a VP, I'd, uh, an individual who was a principal, and I always watched him, um, you know, walk around the hallways and dealing with situations, and he was very calm. And one of the things I took from him is that calm is strength. Because there's a lot of situations in a day, as you as you are aware, in a school, you know, if, if you're not calm, things don't always go as you want. So uh, being calm is one of the things. So uh, as far as you said, kindness, and you know, that is my personality. It's funny, my wife would say, you know, you're a different person at work, because I think when I go home, and you have kids and dealing with all of those stresses, it's a little different. And yet, when it's family, you handle that a little different. Uh, but again, when I, I, I talk about, you know, students, and, and it, it's true, I, I want to deal with every student and an individual as I would with my own child. And I've always thought that and I've shared that with staff, teachers, and I remind them, treat kids as if they were your own. So uh, from there, you know, I've always uh, taken that and and used it. Yes, there's been times where maybe, you know, I didn't have the best advice. You said I was providing good advice. Maybe, maybe not. Um, and, and it's okay to go back and say, listen, you know, I thought of this and uh, maybe it wasn't the best way that I handled it. So it's okay to make mistakes. And, it, you know, we tell our kids and I tell the, tell the staff, it's okay. So if it's okay for them. It's okay for me. And, um, you know, anybody in this business, but you have to make it better. How, would you, how do you do that? You talk to kids. You have those great conversations and you say, I could have done it this way. So they know you come in here. Yeah, you made a mistake. It's not a big deal. That's a very good point. And, I'm, and a lot of, I find a lot of people, at least in my generation, find that if you make a mistake, it seems like the end of the world. Um, and, it, and it really isn't. I mean, and one point you said in there where you kind of reflect on it, where you look back and said, this isn't necessarily what I wanted. And you make it right. That's uh, that's very important, especially in in the place where you work. I mean, in general, every day is. Um, what is it kind of like for for the young for the people coming into like the younger teachers? Do you notice? Um, is there anything that you kind of give them pointers, or is there anything that you, they kind of do that you can lead them in the right path? The, the people that are coming into education, uh, the teaching. Yeah, uh, Ryan, it's, it's a very rewarding um, occupation, um, you know, seeing the, the growth in kids daily, um, you know, even small things, you know, we celebrate, you know, small uh, uh, successes, uh, what we call them, uh, you know, teachers coming in, it, it's a lot of work, it, it's not easy, and I, I know right away, you know, people will say, well, you're getting into teaching because you want summers off and you like March break and Christmas off. But for 10 months, you know, uh, people in education work really hard. And when I say people in education, we talk about, uh, you know, everybody refers to teachers, but we have a great support staff. You know, whether you're an educational assistant, whether you're an early childhood educator, whether you are a, you know, a, a secretary at the school, a caretaker at the school, everybody is here for one reason, for kids and taking care of the kids. So, you know, it takes a village. You, you, we talk about it takes a village to raise a family. It certainly does. And that's what school is. I, I'm no more important at, at the school 
Um, I, I tell you a quick story about um, one of my former schools. When you talk about uh, VIPs, uh, there was a, um, a parking spot and it said VIP parking, principal parking. Right. Uh, I told the caretaker to, to take that off because I said, the, the only VIPs at this school are the kids and they don't have a driver's license. So uh, that, that was that part there. But, uh, you know, advice for new teachers. Uh, you got to love being around kids. You ha have to work hard. There's a work ethic. You know, it's not only from, you know, when you get to school at eight o'clock to three, there's all that assessment piece. There's all the planning. Um, there, there's a lot more to, to teaching and you have to be passionate about it and you have to want to work. So uh, you have a work ethic, go to school, the academics, uh, but it's, it's that connection with, you know, kids and families. Um, it, it, it's so important. So, um, you know, to remain committed to a community is what teaching is all about. Yeah, that's, those are very great points. I, I do like how you emphasize the team. That's because no matter what environment you're in, whether it's teaching, whether it's being an engineer or whether it's acting, it, everyone has to work together. And that's something that I learned for myself that I think a lot of people can take from is that you can't do it alone no matter what you're in. And you, you're always going to need other people to rely on that rely on you as well. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So what, what did you kind of do back to this COVID? What was there? I mean, besides, because through all that, there was so much distancing. What did you kind of do to keep that team together between the, the staff for, for the children? I know you talked about social networking, but was there anything you did like meetings or to, to keep them together? Yeah, we, we did that. Um, we had the same thing. So we would have our Google meets and uh, on Fridays um, at first when it was all new to us, you know, on Fridays, we would virtually meet, we would have um, our Friday um, beverage, we'd call it. Uh, and, and folks would just talk, right? They talk about some of their experiences, some of the great things were happening, maybe some of the challenges that they were experiencing. Because again, people are home at this point, right? People are afraid they didn't know what was coming next so just to remain connected and we would we would do those often and then the same thing was you know if there was a staff member's birthday so we'd all get on together and you know celebrate the staff member's birthday whether you have dessert at home or you're having a coffee um, or early morning meetings we would do the same thing and we'd have our coffee meetings um, one of our staff members uh, also uh, led rosary groups you know staff would jump on and you know our faith is very important to us and um, you know, they would hold rosary groups. And, and when they first put it out, they would think there was only a handful of people that would jump on, but that's not the case. A lot of people were jumping on and, you know, spending a half an hour uh, together and uh, praying the rosary was, was an awesome experience. So it, it was all about the connections and finding opportunities to connect. And, um, you know, we had a great staff and uh, a lot of people would, you know, come up with different ideas. You know, it was never me being you know, the lead on all of those, like, you, that, that's one of my big things, you talk about team, and within teams, you have to have many leaders, and, you know, one of my models that I've, you know, lived throughout this experience as a principal, you know, I'm not here to create followers, you know, I'm here to create new leaders, so I like individuals that, you know, lead, uh, and that's what makes teams move forward, so uh, you know that well. Yeah, yeah, this kind of leads into my next question, so I was, just going to ask, what is it like moving from a leadership position? I guess you could say when you go from principal to a, to a new school principal, like uh, what you were just talking about, how you have other leaders around you. Is that kind of the scenario when you go from completely moving one place to being the principal to the next place? Like that's kind of, you're, you're, you don't know anybody kind of thing and you're the, the one right up there. So you obviously have to have others around that lead you in certain situations. So what's that like? Absolutely. Well, we, um, I know uh, in Niagara Catholic, uh, you know, we have a transition plan. So, okay. you know, in, in meeting with, you know, the former principal, uh, uh, Mr. T was here and, you know, we, we had several meetings um, before I got here. Once the announcement was made, you know, we talked all the time, you know, he would share files. Uh, he would include me on emails that, you know, whether it would be with the Catholic school council chair or the, you know, the uh, priest at Our Lady of the Scapular Parish. Um, so I was part of those uh, transition plans and uh, moving forward. But uh, once you get to a community, 
uh, Ryan, the, the most important part, and we go back to that connection piece, it's day one, being in the parking lot, saying hi to parents, welcoming kids. Um, that's the only way they, they really get to know you. So, um, you know, once you get here and uh, we use the summer, um, you know, the way it's always been is you close down your school two weeks, you have two weeks to close down your school, um, you know, at the end of June, and then you're in school for two weeks before, you know, September rolls around. So you, there's a lot of preparation, newsletters, uh, letters to families, that, you know, this year it was an email, no more paper copies that we'd mail out, but uh, it, it, it's an exciting time. You know, I was at Loretto Catholic for nine years, absolutely loved it. Uh, sad to go, uh, but it was exciting to be in a new community and you hear great things about Mary Ward and where I am now and they're all true. So uh, it, it's awesome. Uh, you, it's like, you know, starting, starting new, you get those butterflies in your, in your stomach and, uh, but it was an exciting experience. Uh, I, here, because they're bigger schools, uh, it's great to work with vice principals and I've had the pleasure of working with many great people. Uh, so, you know, working as a team to get started, uh, it, it, it's a great rewarding experience. Yeah, I can definitely, I can, I can see how that would be very rewarding. I mean, especially moving into a new environment is scary, but exciting. Um, yes. One right. thing for people that are growing up, I know that change can be very scary because it's fairly unpredictable. Um, but it sounded like you embrace change in that situation anyways. Is there anything that you've experienced over the years that it's formed that the way you see change to be a positive because change really is growth and, and it is a good thing? It, it certainly is. So um, just my uh, experiences, Ryan, have led me to be more comfortable with change because it is very difficult. You know, I see that in kids and, you know, when they have to experience something new, they're very hesitant in mm -hmm. trying new things. And we talk about, you know, taking risk. Risk leads to reward. If you don't, just like Gretzky says, you miss 100% of the shots that you don't take, right? So um, it, it's important. And we talk to kids about that. But my experience is in, um, you know, taking a leadership path, going from teaching, you know, I was moved uh, as um, a teacher at St. Pat's to a teacher in charge at St. Kevin's, uh, to a VP two consecutive years, and then to a principal at three different schools. So, you know, I've had that experience. And, you know, I say the butterflies, yes, it still happens because it, it leads to excitement. Mm -hmm. uh, but once you experience change often, you become comfortable with it. So, um, you know, uh, you talk to kids, especially my own kids, and I say, you got to try things, try it, you might like it, you know, don't be hesitant always, because if you if you become and stay stagnant, you won't experience new things. So, um, you know, try things like uh, we talked about earlier. If you're not happy in one career, try something else. You'll find something because there is something out there for you. That job might not even exist for some of our younger kids in kindergarten right now. There'll be yeah. new things that I'm not even aware of, but it, it'll be there. There'll be something for everybody. Yep. And a lot of the things um, like failure, failure, I know, especially with my generation, or for me anyway, that I experienced was a huge thing that seemed like it was so bad. But failure is really the one thing that my last podcast, my uh, the, the mentor that I have now, first attempt in learning is what he, he says. And I, I think that that's a great way to look at it because it's something that's good. It actually shows that you're going on the right path because you're, you're taking steps towards what you want. Absolutely. Um, is there anything that you kind of teach or tell the kids? Because I know that you talk, you've been talking about, you know, you, you, a lot of these things you tell the children. Um, is there anything that you talk about like failure with them at all? Like, do you ever tell them that you got to fail to learn? Or anything well, yeah. Like that? Failure, failure is learning. Right. Mm -hmm. And it also says you pat them on the back because they've tried something, right? What's mm -hmm. worse is that you don't try. We want you to try things. We want you to learn. We want you to experience failure. And, and the other part is not uh, you yourself experiencing the failure is everyone in that classroom because we talk about classrooms as being families. It's okay that failure happens and you have to embrace that and you have to be okay with it. It's not you make a mistake when you put your hand up and somebody else laughs, it's not that. It's, it's okay to do that. It's okay, everybody makes mistakes. 
So if I, as the principal, say that it's okay to make mistakes, I make mistakes, then everyone else should embrace that because you're, you're right. And you said it. Failure is learning. Yeah, I, and that's very, uh, I, again, like I like the, the leadership that you take in putting out what is right and true to you. And, and all those morals and values are very like teaching and, and growing the kids. I know that you always were very positive and you were always bringing up no matter what, it doesn't matter, just keep going kind of thing. And that's where I'm at in my life now seeing, you know, like you said about being stagnant, it doesn't, you don't grow. And, and a lot of that comes back to a lot of things like change we talked about. You, you got to keep going. Absolutely. No doubt. Yeah. I love that so, you said that. Yeah. And, and for the kids out there now going into high school and whatnot, would you give any advice to yourself looking back on when you were early 20s at end of teenage? Would you look back and give yourself any advice or anything, anyone that's that age now? Well, and what I tell kids, one of the things being, you know, taking risks and, you know, I tell my own kids and I know my daughter's in university, my son's still in high school. And I say, try things, you know, try out for this team, you know, participate in this club because you'll, you'll develop more relationships. And when you have more relationships, there's more people that you're comfortable with and you'll, ha you'll have a great time. You know, if you stay to yourself and only with a few friends, it, it, it's, it's okay, but you, you, there's somebody out there that you're missing. You know, there's somebody that you're going to relate to that, you know, might be part of that club that you never thought about being a part of, uh, you know, that you'll have a friendship for, you know, a number of years afterwards. Uh, you know, it's funny in elementary school and, you know, there's, there's always angst in, you know, which class I'm going to be in next year. And Ryan, you can say this, and we all know the same thing. You know, how many kids from elementary school are you still hanging out with daily? You know, there's not always a lot. So, yeah. you know, in developing different relationships, meeting new people, trying new things, it's always so important. Uh, you know, participating, clubs, sports teams, there's so much out there. And high schools, you know, pre-COVID and now they're starting again. And I love that, you know, sports and clubs are all starting again. It's great for kids. Uh, you know, just get out there, whether it's the pastoral team at, you know, whether it's a drama club, whether it's the chess club, uh, you know, participate. Uh, it, it makes, you know, life easier when you're around a lot of people. And, and then you'll develop connections with, uh, you know, a small group that you'll carry on and be friends with for the rest of your life, right? Absolutely. In those situations, what would you kind of tell someone that were to say risk is too scary because I know a lot of people might hear that and say that sounds great but I, I'm too scared to try or I'm too scared to to go to that club like what is there anything that you would tell someone that is too afraid to, to just try uh, that's a great point and that's it, twofold one is what I just said do it with somebody else that mm. will help alleviate some of the stress and anxiety to get there because once you're there you'll feel good that you yeah. actually got there. Uh, but the other part is, and we tell staff that. So there's a lot of great people that are in teaching. They're in it for the right reason. Um, we have transition meetings. I'm just going to give you an example from your grade eight to high school. And classroom teachers will talk to, you know, the, um, the guidance counselors at the high school. And we'll say, you know, Ryan's great at basketball. Ryan enjoyed chess at elementary school. So any of those things we'll talk about. So they'll have them on a list. So when it comes time for, let's say the hockey team, they'll come in and, and call on you saying, hey, we, we know that you play hockey. Why don't you come and try out? So even a gentle tap from an adult mm -hmm. uh, to get you to cross that barrier uh, is always helpful. Uh, but we try to, try to you know, uh, empower kids to make those decisions on their own. And you're right, it is scary. Because you're going to sign up for a club and you, you think going from an elementary school, um, you know, that's smaller than you're going to a high school of over a thousand kids. And now you got to walk down the hall, sign up in the library, and you have no idea who's going to be there. Uh, it is very difficult. That's why, you know, find a friend and, and get there. Because the key is to get there. Once you're there, it'll be awesome. That is a great point. I like how you said like have someone because a lot of the time it's all in your head and a lot of the time it's actually I mean almost 100% of the time what's going on up there is not true because once you get there and you start you're like wow this is way better than than what I thought 
So it, having that person to keep you accountable or to even just go is, that's a great point. I, I really like that. Yep. And just like this podcast, when you reached out, you're like, hey, you want to participate in a podcast? I'm like, oh, I don't know if I could do this, but uh -huh. I took a risk and I'm, I'm having a great time. So thank you. Yeah, no, I, I really appreciate you coming on. Um, as we, we wrap, we're starting to wrap up here. Um, is there anything that you would like to say to someone that would be transitioning, like from, like you were talking about from elementary school to high school, was there anything that you'd like to say to someone that's taking a big transition? I mean, other than taking risk and, and just going for it, is there anything that you would say, even for yourself that you say when you're going through a transition? Yeah. And, and here it's, it's very difficult. And I'm going to, I'm going to say this and it's very simple. It, the, the key is to enjoy the experience. It, it's so hard in anything that we're going, going to do. Y you have anxiety. You, you, you're not sure if it's the right thing. You get through it and you're worried about, you know, my marks, my schoolwork. And can I do the homework? Can I get into my locker? Uh, you know, my code, my locker code won't work. What am I going to do? How do I get to the cafeteria? How do I get my second period class in, in the whole thing? What do we forget about? Enjoying high school, enjoying the opportunity. It's not just related to high school. It's anything. Enjoy the experience. You know, a, a, as a dad, it's the same thing. Like you we're so busy going through life and trying to get your kids to do this, this, this. How, how many times do you sit back and say, I, I, I want to just enjoy being a dad. Sometimes you forget that and you have to remind yourself. So, you know, the work will get done. There'll be people there to support you. You will find your class. You, you'll, you'll get into your locker eventually. And if you don't, you got to backpack anyway. So, uh, you know, eliminate all those stresses uh, and just get there. It's easy for us to say that now, Ryan, uh, but for, for a student going into that, it, it's scary, Definitely. right? So, uh, you know, the big thing is to enjoy the experience. And I tell my son that all the time. I tell my daughter who really hasn't stepped foot into Brock, you got to get there. You got to right. enjoy the university experience. So um, really, that's my advice. That is, that's great advice too, because um, you'll never know what it's actually like if you're going to forget your law combination, if you're not going to know how to get to the cafeteria until you get there. And then you're going to see, wow, that actually wasn't that difficult. You're so right. enjoying the experience and being there. That's, that's great advice. Yeah. Well, I want to say thank you for coming on, Mr. Cardamone. This has been a great talk and I appreciate uh, you taking the time to be here today. Thank you. And I appreciate you thinking of me. Awesome. Well, Take thank care. you very much, everyone. I, I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one.